Hi, I'm Thierry, co-founder and head of DevRel at OctoML, and I want to show you today how you can use Automatic 11.11 in API mode to power your Gen AI based web apps. And here we have this app called Aquarelle that I've used to generate watercolor style paintings based on a text prompt. And this is using Automatic 11.11 in the backend that is being called an API mode. I'm going to show you how that works. So last time we looked at how to use Automatic 11.11 web UI in its default standard GUI mode. And we launched that from an Octo AI compute service endpoint. The idea here is that you can launch an endpoint with a Docker container that has Automatic 11.11 web UI pre-installed. Once it's up and running, you can take the URL here and when you paste it in your browser, you can start to play around with the tool. So this is a really nice and easy way to get started with Automatic 11.11 Web UI. But this is the standard GUI tool that lets you interact and prototype ideas using Stable Diffusion XL. If you add though to the URL, the docs um, extension here, you will arrive on this fast API documentation page. And scrolling down, you'll notice that there's documentation on all of the different API endpoints, including this SD API V1 text to image endpoint that you can post requests to. And that is essentially the API that you can use to build your web app that does text to image generation. So we can look at the payload here as an example value, or we could take a look at the schema here. You can also click on try it out in order to test out this API yourself. So we're gonna clean up a little bit this massive JSON object here. We're gonna remove some fields that we don't need to really tweak. So I'm gonna leave the C to be negative one here. I'm gonna keep prompt negative prompt and styles. I'm going to make sure that we keep the number of steps. We can remove config scale for now. And we're going to keep the resolution here. Everything else I'm going to throw out. And that is because these values will be left to their default values. Uh, so I'm going to feed in the prompt, say, a llama dressed as a superhero. Under styles here, we're going to put in the style string that we got from the web UI in GUI mode, so we have to copy the, the string uh, uh, accurately, so it's style column watercolor. So that's what we're going to use. Style column watercolor. Seed is going to be left to negative one. In terms of steps, we're going to reduce this to 30 steps because that is overkill. Uh, 50 is a, is a big number here. And of course, the resolution, as we saw last in the last video, 1024 by 1024 works best. And so we're essentially reproducing what we did in the GUI now through the automatic 11.11 API. And by hitting execute, we're gonna send this payload over by posting it to this uh, endpoint. And if we go to the Octo AI endpoint logs, we will see that we've actually executed here these uh, 30 steps uh, that happened just you know a few seconds ago these 30 denoising steps that corresponds to the request that i just sent to test or to test that uh, my my automatic 11.11 api and sure enough if we look at the uh, image uh, or the response body we'll see an image field with the uh, payload that we can paste in this tool here this web-based tool that lets us visualize images from their base64 encoded string value. So this is a massive uh, string that we've pasted here because it contains all the information for that image we're trying to render. But once you paste that in and remove the quotation marks, we should get a image that we can visualize in the browser. And just like that, you can test out your API, make sure that it is working, make sure you understand the fields that you need to pass in you also note that there is additional information that is returned to the user, like the parameters used uh, that were used um, for that SDXL generation, as well as some generation 
uh, information to reproduce exactly that same image, like the seed that was used here for that image. So this is all useful inf information in case you want to reproduce this yourself. And if we go back to the app here that I've shown you, I will provide a GitHub repo that contains the sources here um, to launch that Next.js app yourself. All you have to do is follow the instructions here, uh, which require you to build and run a Docker container uh, with the uh, Next.js app uh, in it. And you will just need to pass your automatic 11.11 URL here that you will have launched yourself in order to call into its APIs. And I'll just go to app API predictions route.typescript to show you that the JSON payload here that we're passing and sending over to the SD API v1 text to image endpoint corresponds to what we just played around with. I've just applied the styles manually here. Uh, this is nice if you want to have a bit more finer control over the styles that you choose, but these are very well documented. You can just go and Google um, watercolor SDXL styles and you'll see what kind of keywords you need to add to your positive and negative prompt. And that's about all you need here to use automatic 1111 in API mode. So I hope you found this little session helpful. Automatic 1111 is a wonderful tool to prototype new ideas with stable diffusion and this migration from prototyping to actually deploying your app is very easy when you use the API. So in the next video, we're going to look at how we can accelerate the runtime of Stable Diffusion Excel, shave off, pre shave off uh, precious seconds here in order to get fast uh, image generation for your app and how to scale that to more than just one user, but multiple users uh, using Octo AI. So stay tuned for the next video.